As a senior BBC Radio 2 announcer, I place a very high value on my integrity. That's bought it. <laughs> Any advance on... Come along now, we are talking about a BBC Radio 2 announcer, a senior BBC Radio 2 announcer, in excellent condition. BBC only, none of your ITV rubbish. God oh, bless you, Governor, you're a tough. Um, one of the best in the business at reading the shipping forecast, introducing a book at bedtime, The Archers, Saturday Night Theatre, The Gloria Hannaford Show. Any questions? I have. What's that? How much a week do you cop for? Oh, well, uh, I'll have to reckon that lot up. I'm a senior BBC Radio 2 announcer. A registered pauper, a certified beggar, a qualified vagrant, and I've just been accepted into the loyal and ancient order of scroungers. How much do you touch for with that lot? I'll just reckon that lot up on my favourite instrument. <laughs> Beautiful. How much? 287 quid a week, including danger money. Danger money? For introducing Jimmy's Cricket Team starring Jimmy Cricket. Two hundred and eighty-seven quid a week, eh? I get a fiver for doing this show. I've complained to the artist payments review board, and they agree it's not right, and they're going to look into it. Hello, speaking. Payments review board, you have? I should think so. Goodbye. Three pounds seventy p I get for doing this show. <laughs> Many of you have asked if. Good afternoon. I represent the Acme Double Glazing Company. I already have double glazing. As I was saying. <laughs> Care for a quote? <laughs> I'd report him to the police if I was not on bail. <laughs> ah, 26 retired shoe repairers have just arrived by coach. What a load of old cobblers. <laughs> True. Here is the long range weather forecast. It'll be misty in them cars. Over the south. Can't get any rain over the northeast. Further south, the drizzle will give way to patchy sunshine in the afternoon with a chance of fog overnight. And I've got a sore throat. Good man. Uh, I can talk to you now. I'm on the phone. If you care to leave a message, I'll get back to you just as soon as I can afford an answer phone. Start your message after I've swallowed the pips. It's me. It's not. Hang on while I have a look. Yes, it is me. Listen, I don't ever want to speak to you again. I don't ever want to hear your voice as long as I live. You're neither use nor ornament. You haven't got an ounce of pity or understanding for people like me with a problem. Well, what problem have you got? I'm a woman alone. <laughs> Serves you right. See what I mean? You haven't got it. Compassion. Snow White was better off than me. Snow White? Well, what's she got to do with it? She had seven dwarfs. <laughs> You've cracked it? I soon will. I saw them adverts for the unattached in the paper. You mean people looking for companions? It said, young male, no ties. Ooh, I love a man with an open deck shirt. <laughs> Hello, I'm a stupid man. Not now, stupid man. Oh. Uh, what else... <laughs> what else did the advert say? It said, man seeks female companion, must be fond of walking and music. And are you? I am now. I bought a pair of size 12 boots and a bugle. <laughs> I answered one of them adverts. It said, man seeks female companion. Must be of a quiet, gentle and tender disposition. You? Who else? Ahoy! And I'd have him if I could swim. Uh, hello, it's me again. I'm busy at the moment, stupid man. Oh. Tell me about the adverts for a companion. I saw one and it said, Are you unattached? Unattached? I've been disconnected. <laughs> I thought I'm on here. Get in quick while he's still warm and walking, whoever he is. 
what did the advert say? It said unmarried bachelor. <laughs> unmarried bachelor? That means he's never been off the subs bench. <laughs> he was the one for me. I love that one. Well, how could you be so sure that he was the one for you? Because the advert said lonely man seeks lonely woman. And they don't come more lonely than me. Must be prepared to share a life of solitude deep in the countryside. Ooh, I knew then who he was. I knew. Knew he was what? A farmer's lad. <laughs> Big, hunky, rugged lad with a weather-beaten face. Shoulders on him like a row of terraced houses and a chest. Ooh, a chest like he had an accordion on underneath his singlet. Now, hang on a minute. A minute? I'll hang on for more than a minute. Please. And the thighs, ooh. Oh, the thighs. You're getting carried away. One of us will be and it won't be me. Oh, the thighs. Great big thighs like old farmers lads have through all that thrusting. Thrusting? Thrusting. Thrusting the plough through the warm earth. The warm earth I will punish farm. I'll have his King Edward's back in no time. I'm sorry to be a nuisance. Can you come back later, stupid man? Uh, not really. Uh, excuse me, is that the young lady what answered my advertisement? Him? Him? He put the outfit in the paper? I did. No, no. I'd rather be a woman alone. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Grange, the fourth Earl was taking his guests on a conducted tour of his stately home. Everyone paused to admire the relics hanging from a beam in the main hall, which belonged to a 15th century acrobat who should have had more sense. <laughs> in the greenhouse, Lord Timothy was admiring a rather splendid Venus flytrap, when it quite suddenly closed with a sharp snap, and Lord Timothy is now a life member of the Women's Institute. <laughs> Meanwhile, at a nearby railway station. Goodbye. 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 Don't forget to write. Goodbye. I won't. Goodbye. Look after yourself. Goodbye. I will. Goodbye. Give us a ring when you arrive. Goodbye. I will. Goodbye. Have you got a clean hanky? Goodbye. I've got one. Goodbye. I'll, uh, I'll let you know about the uh, about the other. Well, uh, goodbye. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Don't forget to eat all your sandwiches. Goodbye. I won't. Goodbye. Keep your chin up. Goodbye. I'll do my best. Goodbye. We'll miss you. Goodbye. I'll miss you. Goodbye. We all will. Goodbye. You'll soon get settled in. Uh, goodbye. I'm sure I will. Goodbye. If you need anything, just let us know. Goodbye. I will. Goodbye. The train's leaving. Goodbye. I know. Goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. I will. Goodbye. Don't forget your old mates. Now, well, goodbye. I won't. Goodbye. 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 Who was he? <laughs> I've no idea. Me neither. Give him something to think about on the train. <laughs> Really stupid, that was. You're not wrong, stupid man. All those people saying goodbye, and they didn't know who they were saying goodbye to. That's because their heads are full of Jolly Robins. It was a bit strange. It were a mystery. And where there's a mystery, you'll always find him. Who? You know. <laughs> My name is Marlowe, Philip Marlowe, Private Eye. 
I lent my other eye to a guy with a squint who was trying to go straight. <laughs> I'd been to a drive-in movie. I parked next to a couple seated in the back of their car. They weren't watching the picture. They were more interested in the forthcoming attractions. <laughs> it was a Tarzan film. Jane smacked Cheetah saying, Tarzan got to eat that banana. <laughs> I'd seen this picture before. I closed my eyes because I didn't want to watch the next bit where Tarzan came swinging through the trees and the vine snaps and he hits the coconuts. <laughs> I looked at my watch. It was 15 after 9 o'clock, a quarter past the hour. Time to go. I drove my brand new Buke along 9th and 10th, turned into 11th and 12th, along 13th and 14th, Straight into 15th. That was a mistake. There was no 15th. I was now driving a bull-nosed Morris. I turned on the car radio. There was a dame singing, but the reception was poor. An unusual title, but a nice tune. I pulled up outside a plush apartment block. I took the elevator up to the ninth floor, put it down, and had a rest for a while. I stopped outside apartment 765 348 2291. 467 821. 366758 44. It had a very wide door. Mildred was in there. I could hear her humming to herself. I pushed the door open and stepped in. Mildred was on the settee, curled up in a ball. It's a good trick. She looked at me. Well, Philip Marlowe? Make me an opera and I'll change it to Desperate Dan. <laughs> she laughed and threw her head back. I managed to catch it. I guess you found my husband. Is he dead? All over. I know you did it, Mildred. You stabbed him with a pair of garden shears. Did he say anything? Yeah, he said he was glad he didn't buy a lawnmower. <laughs> He found out. About you and that young guy who sang at a run-down nickel and dime joint. I'm turning you into the DA. That's another good trick. I don't think so, Marlo. She shoved a gun in my ribs. This made me angry. I'd only just cooked them. <laughs> Sorry about this, Marlo. No need to be. What do you mean? Freeze. Drop the gun, Mildred. We'll take over from here, Marlo. We're taking you in, Mildred. Murder one. I felt sorry for Mildred. She had the world at her feet, and now she was heading for the state pen. See you around, Marlo. Goodbye. No hard feelings, Mildred. Goodbye. It's what we get paid for. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Only doing our job. Goodbye. 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 My name is Marlo, Philip Marlo, and I hate goodbyes. Goodbye. 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 Now, folks, if you find that a bit hard-hitting, then why not turn the light down and listen to A Couple in Love? My dearest, you and I, we proved the world wrong. We are, and we were, meant for each other, despite what they have said. To take the greatest poets the world has ever known to find the words that would sing out with the love that I feel for you. My whole body just tingles at the very nearness of you. <laughs> the warmth of your presence, your innocence, your young, your desirable body makes me tremble in anticipation. Thank you. <laughs> I have loved before. Yes, I have loved before. There have been... There have been others, and then you came along, and for the first time in my life, I realized how little they had meant to me, because in you I found that certain something that made you so very different from any other love I'd ever known. I could only express how I really and truly feel if I had your gift for words. Thank you. I'm unable to find words. I just can't describe this thing that's welling up inside me. Thank you. <laughs> it was a divine providence and nothing else that led me into the chemist shop that day. It was a day that was to change the rest of my life. 
I knew that when our eyes met over the odor eaters. I had to see you again. I, I had to find some excuse to see you in that chemist shop where you stood with such grace behind the stack of pink ointment which said, apply freely to chaps at the top of your legs. <laughs> I didn't have chaps at the top of my legs. I had an aching love in my heart. It was because of you that I bought four bottles of wart remover. <laughs> it mattered little that when I returned to my lonely home, all the knobs dropped off the doors. Thank you. It was love and love alone that sent me to my doctor, where I told him I had a complaint. It was a lie, but I had to see you. He gave me a prescription, but I had no need for a surgical appliance. You were the only support that I ever needed. Thank you. But I'm going straight back to the doctor now, because after reading this garbage, I feel as sick as a pig. Thank you. It's a letter from my mammy. Dear Jimmy, your father went to see the local football team and our side got a penalty and your father said the player who took the kick sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. He told him to turn left to Tesco's and he fell in the canal. You learn something new every day. Your father said that the fullback got sent off for kicking another player in the process. I'm glad to be able to tell you that after all the trouble that we've had from the council, they've finally agreed to build a house onto the extension. <laughs> we have to thank the man from the housing department. He came to look at the way we were living and he agreed it was a bit cramped and the coal shed shouldn't be in the bedroom. <laughs> if we wanted to, we could have had a jacuzzi, but your father said he wasn't using the bathroom with a foreigner. The rooms will be much larger, which means that the dog won't have to sleep leaning up. <laughs> I'm getting a man in to do the decorating. The last time that your father did it, there was a great big bubble under the wallpaper. It was three days before we realized that the tortoise was missing. <laughs> your big aunt Nora is still going to Weight Watchers and she's now lost four chins. She has lost some weight, son. Last week she threw a bra away and a family of gypsies is living in it. <laughs> Your granddad is a terribly independent man. He refuses to open the door to the Meals on Wheels lady, saying he doesn't want charity. The Meals on Wheels lady is just as determined as he is, and yesterday she shoved his dinner through the letterbox. We were 20 minutes trying to get the sausage out of his ear. <laughs> That's all for now. Love, Mammy. P.S. and there's more. Your father lost his bus pass last week. He went to the transport department and they were very understanding. They have given him a skateboard. <laughs> P.P. double P and two S's. I was going to send you some homemade marmalade, but I thought not. Your father was cutting his toenails and I left the lid off the jar. <laughs> Lots of love, Mammy. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Grange... Get off your bum! <laughs> back at the Grange, Sir Toby looked askance as a hungry ferret shot up the right leg of his trousers, came down the left leg and said, that was a waste of time. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Brigadier General. Some man-sized tissues. Um, not many in the club tonight, Corporal. I think that your fellow officer friend has just arrived, sir. The devil he has. Man-sized, old fellow. Bless my soul, it's old sticker. Sticker stamp. Ah, sit yourself down and get yourself outside this bottle of rather splendid port. I say, old fellow, that's death civil of you. Mm. Ah, that's much better, I must say. Uh, over there, uh, asleep in the armchair, isn't it old uh, badly, uh, badly... Uh... Badly done to. 
By George, so it is, poor devil. Yes, that, that was a nasty business in India. Oh, frightful, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, a hand grenade went off by accident not six feet from where he was standing. Uh, poor fellow hasn't been the same since. He lost his faculties. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Uh, they found them three days later in a field. <laughs> Didn't he have a rickshaw? <laughs> Wouldn't you if a hand grenade went up not six, six feet from where he was standing? <laughs> uh, cheers. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Mm, changes. <laughs> Ah, mm, dash fine port man size. <coughs> uh, do you ever see you ever see anything of old Adam uh, Adam uh, Adam pruned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the chap. Do you ever do you ever see ever do you ever see anything of him? He he married a woman. Oh <laughs> the old rascal. Uh, 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 she's twenty two and he's eighty seven. Tried to see him last week. Tried? Tried to see him, man's eyes. The doctor fellow said he wasn't fit enough to receive visitors. I pinned a note to his oxygen tent. Oh. <laughs> Would you care for another? That was the question that put him in the oxygen tent. This damn fine port. Mm -hmm. uh, how's your good lady wife? Uh, huh? Old Delcy. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Delcy tissues. Oh, yeah. Still a bit of a tear away. <laughs> Game for anything, old Delcy. <laughs> we will never believe what she's doing now. An another port, and I'll believe anything. Uh, cheers. Uh, cheers. 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 What, 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 what is old Delcy doing now? Well, here, here's one for you. Aqua. Uh, aqua aerobics. And, uh, what, what the juice is aqua aqua Oh, I, look, I don't think I can say it again. Mm. Uh, aqua uh, aqua aerobics. Well, that's a new one on me. I know a chap in an oxygen tent who say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Delcy swims in water, sort of ballet dancing in water to music. My hat. Is it? <laughs> I've been using it as an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's really convenient. Uh, yeah, the old Delcy dives into the pool and swims to music. By the Lord Harry, she, she actually swims to music. Oh, never. Yeah, old Delcy dives into the water uh, and the music goes... <laughs> 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 That reminds me, you know, I went to see that film Jaws in the cinema. I got frightened. I said to the manager, I'm frightened. He said, we'll sit in the shallow end. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Grange, a stark, raw, evil terror was about to strike. to get out got to get out we'll never make it the right side quickly put something heavy against the door they'll just smash their way in nothing can stop them there's no way we can stop them now they're coming in they're coming in there's three of the monsters we don't stand a chance against them they're coming in they're coming in no 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 oh! Ladies and gentlemen, your favorites, my favorites, everybody's favorites, the husband and wife singing Joe, Daphne and Cyril Billington. <laughs> Daphne, Cyril, I wasn't over-exaggerating when I said that you're everybody's favorites from the world of musical comedy. My dear, dear chap, I, I can only say that I'm totally and completely lost for words, and I'm sure my dearest Daphne feels the same. Darling Cyril... 
I simply cannot find the words to express my feelings at this very moment. I know that I speak for my darling Daphne. Dearest heart. We do find the love and affection of our public quite overwhelming. I'm sure you must do. It makes us feel so inadequate, so inferior. One office is. <laughs> Pardon? I was delighted for you both when I heard that you were doing a world tour. My dear Daphne and I are thrilled that we'll be able to perform to our countless admirers worldwide. A lifelong ambition for my darling Cyril and myself. Have you got a repertoire? A Ford Escort. <laughs> Oh, dear me. Could I have a word with you, Lord Snooty? I'm not saying a word, darling. Keep it like that. Uh, your many fans worldwide will be thrilled to hear you singing the works most associated with you. My dear boy, we know exactly what our fans want to hear. As a matter of fact, my dear Daphne and I have been sorting out exactly what we will be singing on tour. All the old favourites which you sing so beautifully. Indeed, darling. There's some lovely songs in Madame Butterscotch. Butterfly. Where? I... I hate correcting you. I've noticed. It's Madame Butterfly. I'm doing my best to hold myself back here if he starts... It's all frightfully difficult for dear Daphne and I, as we have so many songs and, and it's so difficult to please everyone. Yeah, the list must be endless. <laughs> endless. There's the much-loved Choo Chin Strap. <laughs> Chow. How are you going, darling? <laughs> well, let's get it right, darling. Choo Chin Chow. You can't resist it, can you? Every week he back heals me. I'm sorry, I'm doing my best to get it right. It's Choo Chin Pigging Cow. Chow. Chow. <laughs> Will you both be... Why don't you get that gob measured for a zip? <laughs> Even Lord Owen and Cyrus Vance couldn't stop her now. And you... Great big dollop of nothing in particular. Uh, about your world tour. With him? A world tour with him? He'll be knackered before we get to the station. <laughs> now, that really is most unkind. You know that I have a slight chest problem. Oh, I know, I know. I'm the one who has to stand singing next to you and you're stinking of camphorated oil. Just a minute, Daphne. Never mind, just a minute, Daphne. I have to rub his chest before we go on with camphorated oil. I've got wavy lines coming up in front of me. That is hardly my fault. The theatre was very damp when I appeared in the Barber of Seville. It's a pity you didn't cut your pigging throat! <laughs> That's enough. I don't think Daphne is quite finished. Too right I haven't, you dog's leftovers! World tour? You two on a world tour? I wouldn't travel a yard and a half to see the pair of you. Well, that's not a very nice thing to say. Come, Cyril, darling. I can't abide bad manners. <laughs> That was Jimmy's Cricket Team, starring Jimmy Cricket, with Bill Pertwee, Peter Goodride, and Noreen Kershaw. The script was found stuffed in a broken window by Eddie Braben, and the show was produced at the Club Theatre Altrincham by Mike Craig, who was applied to go on a YTS scheme. <laughs> However, let us not forget that throughout the whole mess, there was one who shone like a beacon with grace, charm, and beauty. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile... Get off your bum! I am... Oh, thank you. Bubbles. Lots of pretty bubbles. 